behind you. Flash Flay, Season 3 Classic. But here we go. If at first you do not succeed, try, try again. The last Olaf game. So at the cost of covering topside and crashing the wave, Isma loses the blue buff. Good heads-up performance there from Shao. Yeah, moves to the top side, but Shao now waiting in the brush. Good early poke from Isma. Jax now forces to counter strike. Niski on the roam in. This could turn against BDS very quickly. They need to burn down Isma as fast as they can. The lockup is there. First blood coming in from Nuke. Niski now trying to fire back on Shao. Good damage for the pop awesome. Can't quite get it done. But the pop awesome. The She's the out of the shield, Nuke. The oh, he's playing with his heart. The red buff too. They just get absolutely obliterated. Top side. BDS top side is on this. Now, Adam has first move, but that HP difference might be problematic. Fail. Let's get this done. Isma, no flash. Wind becomes lightning now walking into Adam, but doesn't have the burst damage to get through the lifesteal of Olaf. Trying to walk back into Irrelevant. Irrelevant now going to try to take off Adam, but Cheo walks up and gets another one. SK getting a little bit flossy. Whilst Jace isn't that much of an EQ champion anymore. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Counter-Strike going in under the correct target as Shao wants to keep that going. Nuke now coming in as well. Pop Blossom just for a bit of extra shielding. Knockup is there and it's good. Lantern to take Shao out if he wants it, but no. Isma knocking him out of the sky. There will be no safety today. And just like that, BDS overstep from the top side of the river. Shao feeling a bit too confident, but now Ice Adam's looking to punish. It. Doss should just go down here. BDS will get one back. I mean, he's the classic Adam, isn't it? Roaming Much down. for now, but I think their ward placement thus far has been solid. That said, Adam, he doesn't have Ghost, but he's just but he does down. have ultimate, and Niski's just gonna get popped! CC immune! I don't know if Isma wants to keep that going. Nuke now there to cover, but he's committing the flash, and now Nuke can try to turn it, but they don't quite have the damage. Irrelevant now zooming in, courtesy of the acceleration gate. Doss, Doss. flash, the hook, it's just one extended play! And that's just quintessential Adam, isn't it? Running around the map, finding kills, but in the end, dying and winning for Shao. It's now essentially dead even. Nuke is the last strong point on the map for BDS. And it all starts with Shield trying to take a 1v1 as a... Good hook. Ice. Right? No immediate follow-up CC, but Dosh should be fine. He triggers the Aftershock. Good damage there, but the Ignite now ticking. Dosh just gets to walk away. Ice wants to walk back to the Lantern, but actually is determined to finish that one off. And there's Niski for the cover. BDS. They were so good, they were so clean early on in the game, but now they're just overstepping. They make a lot of things very easy. I mean, they have first move bot, like bot side. If this goes long, they don't have flash. It could Both be scary. There. TP in, not a lot of upfront damage on a DOS. DOS still alive. This man just keeps getting away. Niski getting in, there's three members locked up. Lambs to the slaughter. And it's just Niski, isn't it? With the flash pop blossom. All right. Everybody, how many melee minions are there? Oh no! Four is the Nico! Oh! Why are we so bad at counting? Why is LeBron exactly where he needs to be? BDS coach line, give us the same! Very often we see, oh, that's another minion. Oh, Alright, you don't even have to count this Flashes one. up. You just know. Root landing. Lantern there. Hook. It's so clean. It's just Nisky. And this is the thing. At the start of the game, the way the early lane plays out, the way that that first skirmish played out, I thought this was to cheese bush the Jace there, but uh, Irrelevant managed to hit a plant which reveals oh, Shia. Prob. That's a Thresh! And soon it will be a dead Thresh, as Rob's got nowhere to go. So hard when you're not linked up with your jump. Which I love against so many melee champions on the enemy team. A Adam and Shea are just going to get eaten alive in the fight. And oh, SK here it comes! Because here comes the pop off of two quick kills! There's only room for one on the Lantern! Nobody gets the train to safety as Adam is forced to ult. And that's all it takes. Adam has to preemptively group because he doesn't have TP. And any kind of flank because they have no mid tower is so easy by Niski. He just presses flash and now that's going to be a Baron star. Shock Blast goes in, just a bit of poke. Shao, flash almost available. Niski just continuing to throw the clone for a bit of vision. SK, are they willing to flip it? Niski doesn't have great tools to stop Jax from getting in. They're taking a lot of time here. 4K, it's getting lower. The rest of SK pulling back in the event of a fight. Now turning in onto Adam. Niski coming from over the wall. Shao with a stun. Baron resets, but BDS just need to get out with as many members alive as they can. LeBrov, nice play back to safety. XK comes in to finish the kill. BDS delay the Baron, but at the cost of at least one life in the form of LeBrov. But it'll only cost them one. Trading it, trading the damage on the Baron. So, really good turn from SK. I mean, incremental advantage going in their favor. And again, if you want them to stay on the Baron there, they're risking oh, Shao. 50, but now they'll just kill Shao, and they don't have to risk anything. Knock up, knock back. Shao sent packing and straight to the graveyard. Well, just really hasn't been there. Really, really great when you're ahead or you're denying oh, a single no. pick on side lanes. But in this situation, Fresh is much worse in the team fight. Niski landing the root. That was a fake Niski in front of you, the real Niski. Hitting Adam for a bit of poke. 12 seconds on Shao. Baron 5k HP. This is by all means 
SK, there's no way this can get stolen. It will go into their back pocket. And again, SK, the game. Wait, I don't think they're going to be able to get it. Nissi might be stuck, though. Is he going to TP? Pop Blossom just trying to burn through Nuke's health bar. And he's very strong, but Mantra W, the extra healing now coming in from Karma. Lantern as well. It should just be a quick pick. Doss sprinting up to the top side. Shut down onto Nissi. That's the start of something, at least limiting the initial impact of this Baron. Yeah, irrelevant TPing to the tier two tower to try and find something. Adam, Adam. without Flash, without ulti, he's gonna die. But he gave his life for a trade on a Nisk. So still a positive exchange in terms of gold. We got some Drakes earlier, so I believe our HUD is just out of date ah. in terms of Drakes. Perhaps during the pause we lost it, but I will check in with production and make sure that, that is still the case. Oh, Isma. Time, of course. Isma getting aggressive, laying down the ultimate. Inner Flame coming out for a bit of poke here, but the follow-up damage is so difficult, but now the ulti has fallen away. The healing coming in alongside the smite. Doss trying to follow up, but what the hell is this? Okay, SK, they are committed to beating these kills, but Exekick now just looking for his montage moment. He took a sweet touch. He's saying, look, guys, you line them up. You look like you're feeding. I'll come in and I'll clean house, and he does just that. I'm not going to call it the greatest play ever. But I will say, XK feels pretty I good. might be grasping at straws a little. I think, I think we are. We're looking for, <laughs> for the silver lining on the cloud for BDS here. Uh, ice, you know, two and a half items, maybe some more pen coming through. Niski now a minion. But SK run the map. It is so difficult for BDS to find a counterplay here. They lack reliable engage. They lack, outside of Lantern, reliable disengage. You can buy something. It really depends what enters Shayo's inventory here, if he can have an impact. But they're just barraging it down mid on a five sack. Group and go. 6k gold lead. Most reliably face check brushes, him and Sheo, but... There it Here is. Here we go! <laughs> Surprise! Forcing out the Olaf ult. Really the only turn tool that they have, but no one else is here to do damage. So now Adam just gets to take over. They got over aggressive! The carry isn't there! Adam gonna start rocking and rolling and SK? ripping through the SK backline! And there it is! SK got a little bit too comfortable. Made a few too many sloppy plays and the windows of opportunity for BDS have been thrown wide open. The Baron is alive. SK have thrown away their entire lead. And they engage onto Adam with no DPS. You had a Nico, Zinzao, and a Nautilus. So he gets the drain tech, absolutely everything, killing everyone in melee range. Your DPS Exekit was trying to engage on everyone else. And that's a huge gold swing back to the side of BDS. Yeah, 50 seconds, and BDS are going to have to face check. Probably move through mid. Karma does count? have Did TP. they count? Did they count? No, they oh, did. No. They didn't count! But now they might have to turn. The bird is now going down. The GA is coming in as well. Exekick untouched. And just like that, Adam's going to get taken out as well. Exekick is so damn strong, but keep your eyes on Ice. Ice trying to lay down all the fire he possibly can. The Exekick is coming in. Ice still living. Ice still holding on. It is Ice versus the world. Jay now running. Backing away, both AD carries alive, but BDS running from their own base. SK, what is the maneuver here? Shao and Ice. BDS. Distractions, to be honest with you. Yes, they can, if they're left unattended, do a lot of work, but they're just front lines. They're just meatballs to try to protect that AD carry. And if they want this miracle, it's going to have to be Niski, and can he find it without Flash? Up time. Objective going down, the 50-50 going in the favor of BDS. Push forward from SK, acceleration gate. Look, not going to connect. Doss not going to land his either. Recall's now coming in. BDS get the objective. SK know that they need to try and force the fight here. Isma locked up, holding onto the ultimate for a second. Exekick now going over the wall. LeBron gonna be in trouble. LeBron should just drop immediately. Ice now firing back. Ice still standing with the summoner spell though. He might just be too damn clean. The point click CC, the immediate follow up is just not there. The flash away from Isma. Finally, he is forced to use it, but they're taking the fight. The hook from Doss is big, but no one is there. His entire backline is already dead and now irrelevant. Doing what he can, but BDS get the fight. They managed to turn it around after they engage. You can see Exekick posturing to dive, but Ice manages to survive and it's too damn hard for Exekick. Observer, stop teasing us. If it's actually going to happen, I'm going to lose my mind. But off of the back of the front PBE? to back. There's no way. No, okay, they, they, they moved away. They moved away. BDS. It was Adam to bring it back. It was Ice to take it home. It was not a clean game, but it was a BDS win. And that's all that matters for them right now. So bloody, so back and forth. And just when you think one team's winning, the other starts winning and bring it back. <laughs> it was, Not ideal. It was messy, but it slapped. I, I mean, yeah, that was a that great was a game. game. But oh, uh, both sides. There's a lot. Uh, no, I think what we're having more so of this game is way more skirmishing, way more insta-kill rather than slow front to back. I think this is really tough to approach. Fnatic, if they do not approach all at the same time perfectly, they will just, one of them will get one shot by the combo here from the side of Giant X. 
Humanoid now going in. Good timing thus far. Damage split up. Humanoid landing the charm. Just continuing. Later down a little bit more. Dashing and trying to finish off. Peach first blood going over to Patrick. Fnatic now running. They get the objective, but they lose a kill in the process. Jackie's now chasing down on the Humanoid. Flash out from Humanoid as well. Giant's getting so much for that one, but losing the Drake. Hook onto Humanoid is big. Charm now going the down. Clumber. Laser, the flick back there. Patrick grabbing another kill. And what's so important there? Is that with this performance here, just trying to convince him that there is no jungler in the area. Oh, there's the E. Dash back. Knock up, flash follow for the stun. Good damage up coming through. Oh, he wants to heal with the execute from Razork. Give him the Oscar. And he goes in. Razork using what he can to secure the objective. It is a man advantage on the bottom side for GX. Keep your eye on Patrick's ultimate. So all the ultimate coming in. Flash out from Noah. Root going down on the Jun. That's the follow-up ultimate now coming in for Patrick. That is one dead support. GX get a single pick, but now Razor is here in the meantime. He needs to make his way out of safety, but he doesn't have all from the previous exchange. And it means he has no way to get home. Humanoid with one dash reset, a single kill. Giving him another stack could be massive. Good poke going in. Humanoid's going over the wall. He wants to turn, he wants to fight, he wants to bring this one back. But Peach living on a sliver of health. He's on the wrong side of the map, however. That's the reset coming in for Humanoid. The ulti not quite up in time, and Noah's still trying to find kills against Patrick. Noah's still standing. Jackie's finds the angle with the Unraveled Earth, but here comes Jun. Jackie needs to get the hell out, and he knows that he's running. He's sprinting, he's got the phase rush. He will make it out to safety. It's a messy fight on the bottom side. And a triple Shipping kill. down, dashing back, and in the end, Noah gets to clean up. We talked about it, the skirmish power in terms of damage output. Very much favors Fnatic. Repeat play on the top side here. TP coming in, that's Jackie's on the way. Oduwamne, it does get burnt down, he resets, and now Jackie's in the midst of everybody. Able to use the Weaver's Wall to make his way out, but very likely they would have just completely won out of the 2v2 if Jackie's did not run. A pick might come out here. Remember the single target nature of the Viego as well, so kind of fishing in the side lanes as an ult comes down. Ulti going down, body blocked. Only one member gonna get locked up. Well, He's just gonna get burned here and the reset's gonna start to come through. Razor getting chipped away out. He needs to make it out safe. He doesn't even have the time to ultimate. It looks like it's gonna be okay, but Ignar still living. Oscar gonna try to get this one back. They knock it back, they stop him calling it! Ooh. No! The Forge God does not miss! Finds the timing and now Noah gets to clean up the start of the fight. Looks so damn good, but it's Fnatic. To win it out in the end. Every single fight, it looks like it's GX favored. But Fnatic managed to turn Zeri. How many times are we going to see this today? And it's the Zeri cleanup. You, you kill Razor, he doesn't get his resets. You're like, great. Wamne getting pushed in now. Oscar has a pretty significant advantage. 1.2k oh, gold lead. TP coming in as well. Knock back there on the Brittle Prox. You run wandering in just to pick up that kill. Oscar was a set here. Odawamne spotted on the vision, however. Crucially. I thought I wanted to get much done on the flank, and both sides were squaring up. 5v5, flash it, Joy getting things kicked off. Oscar immediately gonna follow Noah, gonna instantly all. Oh, human on the backside uncontested for now. Patrick just backing up. They know they've lost this one. Maybe they can get a little bit more poke damage, but they can't get over Egon Razor. He's already found one reset. He's gonna get another. Fnatic are just too damn clean. Flash in, Charm not quite gonna land from Humanoid, but they, they get the fight. They're gonna get the Dragon as well, and Giant X are just getting further and further behind. And Jackie's full. Uh, Non-existent, I would say. You have to really egregiously misposition, which, speak of the devil, Jun and Humanoid need to get the hell out. Bit of a force play here. Jackie's laying down the wall, but Humanoid has the ulti back up. Dash up just in time. Humanoid. That's Merc Treads. That's why you get the Treads. So this is where Vision is really scary. Whoever face checks gets one popped. Maybe not on the side of Fnatic, but definitely on the side of GX. There comes the engage. Arnold coming. Peach trying to get away. Only one member going to get knocked up. Pull back on the Humanoid is big, but the fall-off damage isn't quite there. The Vars ultimate landing, but not able to finish off Humanoid. Good damage going down to Jun. Giant X holding their own. Fnatic get the chunk out, but Giant X suddenly have, you know, permission to just wander in here. Fnatic burned so many of their cooldowns, it did not get a kill. It's a good fight from GX. Jun managed to find some honey fruit. Oscar. A lot of damage. Odwamne off to the side. Oscar getting chunked away. TP now coming in. This is the cue for Fnatic to get aggressive again. Noah just steps up, forces Ignar to flash away. GX being pushed he back. He's one GX, so it's Fnatic are playing the game out with all of their options open. You can see GX, they have to try and face check to make sure the Baron's not started. Pick on to Peach. Peach now zooming out to safety, however. They do get the flash. Oscar flicks back, but as we mentioned before, no one can actually kill this Orn. He's trying to line up the perfect angle. The hook is well timed by Ignar to deny the follow up, though. Knockback is there. Root is there. Oscar trying to finish off Ignar. Ignar just barely able to stay standing. No one can kill Oscar. He's alive. All of their damage is onto this Orn, and he is still alive. And now the Zeri comes a calling. The Viego comes a calling. And it's an easy fight for Fnatic. The Mountain Soul Orn, any fight they take, he'll just take 10,000 damage for free. That's yeah. probably the game. I think that, well.
Are they confident enough to push through? TP's coming in. Looks like Fnatic going to go for the throat here. Try to end this game. Oscar's back with a full health bar. Five members of GX were not enough. I don't think they're getting a sixth in this one. Tower's getting taken down. Credit to Fnatic. Put their foot on the gas, and they did not stop as they find their third win here in the LEC Spring. Two very similar compositions. I think Fnatic just playing it out better, especially topside. With those picks on the Odo Omni Ultimate snowballing the Orn. I mean, brutal when you have the Renekton kind of come out and there's just the Orn on the opposite side, mitigating the lane matchup, couldn't get any advantages, shut down over and over, and the engage, the execution, more confidence from Fnatic to pull the trigger. And of course, can vote for your Kia player of the game at LEC on X, Oscar and Humanoid. In this game, so no reason to pick that. Instead, it looks like it's going to be Aatrox for Wonder in the top lane. Giving him counter pick top does make sense, but it's not a matchup that I expect Wonder to be able to top dominate. And setting up for the invade. Yankos skipping over his wolves to be able to contest this. Knows that his mid laner has prior his bot lane well, now. Away. Hans Summer tanking the tower, the bailout coming out. Ignite ticking won't be enough to kill him off. Yankos on his way down, and Hans Summer only has a cleanse to get away. From the rail, flash shadowing strike, Yankos on the board. Mickey falls as well as Yankos claims a double. Great start for Heretics. They're going to track Yankos once again. No bot lane gank materialized for him. Zvairu a possibility as Caps goes in. The charm connects, there's Yike for the follow-up. And Caps continues his purple patch as Yike takes G2's first kill of the game. Started and Heretics will get it. Three grubs and a drake for them before the 10 a minute mark with Flacker being relatively low mana. Caps going back in. Remember, Zvayu, no flash. Caps just waits and burns the charm in the wrong direction. Oh, if I find it, pull back onto Yike. Perfect from Yankos. Cataclysm in, but Yankos on a killing spree. It's been all him this game as the dredge line lands onto Mickey. He still has the hostile takeover, but does he have time to get out of here and pop that ultimate? Flashes away, the ignite ticking blast cone. Oh, double oh. ward almost. <laughs> almost beautiful from Trimby using the wards to block the blast cone. One got auto. Easy is to hit, neither is the, uh, the Ari charm. Draw attention to top lane though. Broken Blade, locked up here, does have the Flash and the Dominus. Pops the Dominus, World Ender out from Wonder with Yankos and Trimby on the way. Yike trying to get up here, making a beeline for the top lane, but I'm not sure he'll be in time to help out the Croc. Broken Blade flashes! Yeah, great utilization of the Rage meter as Flackard now in some danger. Full back with the handshake, Mickey blasts Flackard back towards Yike. Zvairu on his way as well with a Shockwave. Command Protect, dash away by Yike. Flackard burns the Flash, hostile takeover will land on him and Zvairu to boot and Zvairu walks his way unwittingly into the enemy team. G2 find two. Mickey navigates his way into the jungle to spot Flack. Heretics, they did manage to clear out the vision that G2 had around their jungle, so there's no deep TP wards. You can see Broken Blade TPing behind, Trimby going for Mickey. There's the dredge line as well as Flacker follows up, TPing by Caps as well. Broken Blade is behind Heretics. Do they realize he's on his way? The Croc is angry, Yankos misses the Shadowing Strike, and in goes Yike, and down goes Viru. They didn't know that the Croc was lying in the waters, and the Predator finds its prey. There's three already as Yankos tries to escape the prey. Wonder trying to do the damage onto Yike to take him out. Can't quite get it down, as G2 just wipe away Heretics. Caps and Yankos trading. Caps doesn't even fall to the tower. It's a 5 for O oh, clean ace. This is the risk. Well, they really come online. They need G2 to throw. They yeah, need they stalls. Do. They need a barren However, steal. I watched the SK game earlier today. And apparently that's something that you can just do in games, you know? So we'll see if G2 do it. They have fallen foul to stepping oh. too far forward in the past. Oh. Oh, is that top, a throw? The top uh, lane tier two just cursed today, it seems. I mean, they still get the tower in exchange for Mickey. Near so, yeah. where that control ward is, just past the blue. So if they did try and fight this, there was always the possibility of a TP behind them. They decide against doing it. Now, it's G2's off to start the Baron. Very well done from G2. Overall, good controller. Observers are highlighting the vision. Look at how scared Heretics are now. They're relying on Trimby to face check. They have two far side observations though. One goes down. They have a second to follow up. Caps on his it's way, caps. spotted on the mid wave. 4,000 HP Don't on the flip Baron. Yankos looking for the steal. Can't flip against Arel. She will just take it away from you. We've just better to pop some to Trimby. There's a Cataclysm as well. Good hostile takeover. Wonder's already got one. And on the back line, Flack is still relatively untouched in this fight as Caps tried to dash in and has to dive out. In the end, a one for zero. But there's the charm. 
and there goes Viru. Pop he goes. Yike trying to fight with Trimby and wander off towards the top side, but only one damage source really left in the form of Blackhead. Wonder can do a little bit in extended fights, but he has to flash away from the charm, and Hans Summer's not letting him go anywhere. A killing sweep for Hans Summer as Blackhead, Trimby, and Yankos have to walk away wounded. Another charm, and there's the knockup. Blackhead down, caps on a rampage. Hans Summer joins him as well with the double. It was a messy start to the fight, but G2 find a way to clean it up. It's only the former G2 member that's left standing as G2 now make their way into the base of Heretics. Might just be game. I wonder if they can. Zviro is up in 10 seconds. The inhibitor will fall. Four members alive. Remember, Cassie's auto try. attacks will be bolstered against us. That AP helping you take down turrets. First Nexus Tower falls. The second short to follow. Zviro comes back up, but immediately is charmed by Caps. He's on a fine run of form right now as G2 will continue their undefeated streak. Caps TPs away. The ultimate cherry on the top of the cake. Cake a laughing Caps as G2 go 4-0. The early game was a little scary. I think Heretics did some great stuff to mitigate their goals and plans to shut down this bot side of the map. But ultimately, G2 just found some amazing fights. Two back-to-back. The first, those two initial picks, and that great fight around the dragon. Impressive stuff. You can go over to X for Photon. I assume this is top lane. It I mean, could be, but you can play Wukong Jungle. You so definitely can. can. That's very buffs, true. Right? Uh, the well, the, the buffs are actually tailored more towards his top side because oh, well. this is week two, and there are six weeks per split. Yes. Three regular season, yes. three playoffs. Okay. That's right, right medic. Oh, hook. Frescawi. There's nowhere for him to go. Doesn't burn the flash wisely but falls for it. Kazi gets a stack. Two of them, in fact. Okay, why? For Sky, we able to get a recall off without having to expend his TP, which VTO wasn't able to manage. So there is a slight teleport advantage in that mid lane for Frescao. We obviously need to wait two ten minutes before it's unleashed. There's the charm. Dag was coming in from the side here as well. Will Frescao overstep? VTO almost down below 100 HP. Dagless waiting on the counter strike and with no vision in that bush, doesn't want to step any further. I was just about to say, Daglas needs to help him push this way. Shin does still have the flash of his own, but the AD carries Ghost Flash burnt for MDK and winning trade for Vitality. Re-engage options here, though. Oh, they just lock up Illusang and he dies. Vitality! They come out on the top side of plays. They come out with a winning play and then they overstep. It's happened twice now. Big wave there. Hilly underestimating the re-engage ability of MDK. Vitio sees a window for a roam and they're going for a dive in top. Wave arriving, VTO pulls it off to the side, Charm not going to hit as they dive in onto Merwin under the tower, VTO tanking it and has to get away, Photon able to dodge away, the hook landing onto Super, no summoners on him means that he'll be caught out by Kazi. Two for two so far as Daglas trades off towards the top side, Kazi's going to keep Alvaro in the battle, locks him up, tries to get another Absolution stat from him at 24. So Mirwin stays live. Meanwhile, on the bot side of the map, they do punish the Flashless Summoner spell, less Super, who ends up losing his life. Now we find ourselves a Dragon, and MDK is looking for a collapse. Alvaro coming in from the bottom side of the fight. Kazi, no flash on him, and Alvaro takes him out. Daglas, short to follow, tries to flash, dashes the wall. Rascawi on the chase command dissonance with the movement speed, needs one more auto from a clockwork wind up or something, but can't quite get there. Dissonance leap strike away for Rascawi on. Hillisang will want to clear this out, but Alioya is just waiting in the wings. Hillisang tries to buffer the dredge line away, but he has no way out of this. Trading back onto Super, but it costs him his life. Alioya takes the kill. Nice gank there from Alioya, finds another opportunity. No oh, just the fact that Dagda might gank and. Dagda? Dagda, sorry, Dagda. <laughs> Oh my God, that's a Cyclone. Daglas on his way across. Elioria still waiting. Second Cyclone. Photon. Elioria knocked up in the EQ combo. Daglas joins the fray. Gets the smite into the counter strike. One for one in the top lane. Daglas going to chase Elioria out here. The Jarvan should pretty easily escape. We'll take a chunk of his health for it. Hillisang trading with a death charge. He's going to get locked up though, and they just don't have the damage to get through Super in time. The cleanse from Kazi won't be enough to help him escape a double for Super. MDK's bot lane just coming out on top. Yeah, right. And this is what happens if you just leave it into the isolated matchup. How dangerous can be now? Vito doesn't have Alton Alvaro. El Joya as well. Flash done. The flag and the drag. Vito flashes, but he's locked in a cage. Alvaro takes the kill. Can we take a second to appreciate that this Nautilus is getting farmed? Yeah. And Alvaro has. has More gold than that. That's pretty impressive as Photon just. I mean, Elioya kind of helped, but most of that was Mirwin. That was mostly just Mirwin. 
Uh, yeah, I'm not super... It is your game to lose, so I want to see this level of discipline from them so they can close this game out cleanly. And Elio and Elvro will find a kill in the mid lane again, or at least a pick, as Hillisang is locked up in the Magnus Storm, but Dagger starts to turn it around, and perhaps they were a little too greedy, Betty. If that doesn't prove Vettius is just the analyst of the year, who, who wants to prove it? <laughs> Vitality was just able to find the outplay. Draw my attention now towards top lane, Mirwin. Looks like he's going for another fight. Photon only has the profane Hydra. I no. think El is on his way, though. He is. TP behind, TP behind. Ah, oh, MDK overstepping it again. Daglas coming in. There's a the Cataclysm burn, and Photon survivor for a very long time. He's still alive as El Yoya's overstepped. Daglas will take him out. Hillisang's now fucking Mirwin. Oh, Betty! <laughs> it's all got pear shape for MDK! Oh, my goodness! It's that, all gone wrong! That might be an example of what I was just talking about. Very quiet, audience. Shh. Daglas is on his way up here. Mirwin's gonna get caught with a cataclysm uh, with a cyclone. There's the TP in. Mirwin flashes away. Daglas still on the chase. Has a flash of his own counter strike, flash, leap strike, and it was set up perfectly by Photon and Vitality to catch Mirwin. Because Hilly can always join a fight on the That's top side. True. Usually you wouldn't send your support over here. VTO very greedily stepping up here. He knew that his jungle was out of his control. He should have taken the longer route round, but the cataclysm is dashed away from the charm, flashed away from by Elioya. TP in from Hillisang as he joins the fight in the middle lane. TP oh. behind now by Photon. Vitality have called their battle. The lines have been drawn as Merwin's the first one to be locked up. Leap strike in with a counter strike and Merwin will fall. Vitality can loop around here and now look for more if they want. VTO no flash spirit rush. He won't be able to join the fight quickly, but Photon, Hillisang and Daglas are corralling MDK in. The Magnus Storm flash forward the shockwave. There's one down as Photon falls first, but Daglas with a great counter strike on the back line. Locks up Elioia. He's falling low. He dashes back. He survives for so long. The sun and sky. Cloudy skies for MDK. The sun shines bright for Vitality as they win the fight. It's 15 wow. seconds and now a lot more items have been completed on the side of Vitality. Chain of Corruption on Hillisang. Very tanky target, but already down to half HP. The piercing dark won't heal him up enough for MDK. Nice punish. Find their first. Can they be available? The Baron being started. How long will Vitality wait? Vitio steps into Fog of War, TPs to the mid lane ward. Alvo being forced away, 4,000 already on the Baron. Then Vitality don't have vision, it's gonna be gone before they can even step in. 2,000 on it now, Shockwave wipe, Daglas dashing forward, and they dived in. The Baron secured by Elioya, but what, what cost? To fall immediately, VTO chases forward, and Super will follow suit. Elioya dashes away, but VTO still on the chase. Spirit rush in, Daglas going in as well, no flash for him. Will Elioya have the chops? To dodge to the side, he escapes the only Baron above. Down towards the bottom side. They did get the tier two out of it, so I can well, see what their objective was. But now you have to play through mid and worry about the fog of war in your own jungle, which Hillisang walks right into. He looks for the damage onto Elioya. Depth charge going onto him as well. TP in as MDK looks to continue this fight. Elioya low, though. Alvaro goes in with a Magnus Storm, locks up Daglas, a short way to follow. But the dawning shadow out of Kazi heals up Daglas, shields him up, and BTO dashes in. Daglas goes legendary, the Cataclysm not catching BTO enough, a double for Daglas, one for Photon Taboon, and Hillisang is looking for this 1v2, but I'm afraid Hillisang, you had some shining moments. This is Winter Hillisang as he tries to trade in, distracts Super and Aldebro for long enough for Vitality to push through mid. Uh, they, MDK just don't have the damage. The threats are just too many and too real on the side of Vitality. VTO was basically shut out of the fight right from the start, but it didn't matter. Daglas and Photon were just putting on a clinic on the back line, and you look Cresting up towards that 200 stack mark. Photon spotted. Mirwin shows that he spotted him. Keeps Hilly. him at bay. Hilly lands the hook on Alvaro. Not the target you really want. Last embrace. Dawning Shadow coming out. But Alvaro's already so low. Daglas, chain of crushing going right. Alvaro trying to dash in. The nice shockwave shock on Kazi. And Leoya takes him out. And now it's all on BTO and Daglas to clean up the fight. And they got hands for days, baby, for Scowie down. Photon takes four. He's going to look for five. Hilly steals it. You Salute troll, Hillisang, <laughs> to the end, laughing his way to the bank. Vitality clean up the fight, and MDK are left routed by Vitality. They kill Kazi, but the cost was their whole team. Vitality with an impressive comeback here on day one of week two. And continue their fine run of form as well. We wondered if week one was a fluke. It seems like Vitality are here to stay. Big smile on the face of Kazi. He's going to be happy with that one. 9-0-8 Jack's performance from Daglas. We wanted to see him on a carry.
and he had an impressive game. I mean, just look at Hilly though. He got one kill that whole game, and it was to steal a panther. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, typical Hilly things. Sure. So and we uh, are unfamiliar with his game, exactly, so it's, it's possible exactly. we have to apologize. We may very well have to apologize. Uh, Finn gonna round things out with a Malphite. I talked about how they don't have a lot of... Uh, well, I'm not sure if I'd call... He's losing XP here. He's losing so much. He's gonna lose so much farm here. Both. So at least we'll get solo XP, so hits the two. Comp can walk back forward now. Zoelise flashes away from the wind, becomes lightning. Targum is tanking up the tower. Feromazi gives him a shield. The hook going down as well, but upset not tanking. Plate falls. Bo has to not flash. Not in the best of shapes for him right now, just outside that turret. No flash, remember, on comp. Tries to get away from this. Targum is going for the engage. Zoelise doesn't have a flash either. And Vitality are not in this game. It's Carmine Core, in fact, who get first blood. I mean, nicely done. What else really? Health, the XP advantage over Bo. We'll get that level 6 very soon. You can see that he has just been power farming in this early game. But this game is all about playing through this bot side of the map, getting the Callista ahead and putting the center behind. They threaten the dive once again. So at least. Tower shot. Nothing from Targumus yet. Death Charge going down onto Upset. So at least tries to flash away. Last Embrace with the root, not going to do too much more. Larson coming across, looks for the charm, lands it. But there's the Fates call to pull out Targa. And Carmine Core execute the dive. Pretty, pretty perfect. As long as possible. Zoelix has been left isolated on the bot side of the map. Here comes Finn with the ult. Capuchard has the flash. Uses the same to flip over Finn, but Comp takes the kill. No flash burn. Uh, another plate going to be secured. They're now going to threaten another dive. Here we go. What are you going to do, Zoelix? I can tell you something for sure. You're unlikely to be six feet under in just a moment's time. Targumus almost falls. There's the depth oh. charge, though, perfectly played by Zoelise as Larson comes in for the cleanup. There's two, looking for three as Larson dashes forward. The charm connects. And Carmine Court thought it was rinse and repeat, but instead, they have their heads handed to them by Rogue. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Cabochard just got back to the wave, has had to flash. The tower's about to die. The disdain comes out, but Comp's tanking it. Finn does the same and Rogue get four across the map. And it's actually Rogue that unlocked the top tower first. The news is that Larson's Ari is in an even stronger position, and uh, I think Rogue are going to be happy to fight Ooh, whenever so they want. Just hooks in. Caught out here by Carmine Core as he went a little bit deep. Charm coming out. Saken with a good knockup onto Larson. There's a Magnus on follow up. Spirit Rush flash from Larson gets him to safety. Fear beyond death will pull back Zoelise. Here comes Finn. And Cabochard gets one. Finn on his way. Has the flash. Has the unstoppable force. Communications likely around who has flash for Carmine Court. If you're rogue, can we look for the fight? Spirit Rush is used away by Larson there. Maybe that he comes back into Callista. Frozen Heart finished on Zoelis will help with that attack speed slow. Dragon down to 7,000. Targumus stepping forward. Finn doing the same. The hook onto Targumus. The charm to follow. Face call pulls him out. Zoelis falls low. Fear beyond death. The meat grinder cometh as Finn is going to get locked up as well into the pot blossom. He tries to dive back in. Targumus tries to dive onto the back line. Finn goes down, but now it's on Larson and Cobb to really open up. Bow next to fall. Upset dancing and weaving his way around the fight. But Markoon stolen. The disdain of Carmine he takes away the Urgot and takes away the lives of KC and Ace for Rogue. It looked like a promising fight for Rogue. They were able to take him. Let, let him take it. You just know, keep him here. Yeah, let Larson do work in a side lane. menacing. Send them a threat. I mean, lender. he also has the TP anyway. Does he have a good ward to TP to? Not really. To so whom it may concern. Markoon. Fight. Markoon goes in. Fear beyond death going on to him as well. He's pulled back by Cabochard. Is looking for the fear only onto Zoelise. Larson continues to split push. The Drake secured by Carmine Core. They get a kill, but they lose an inhibitor for it. So I'm not One did... match up into Cabo Shot or into Upset if some weird lane assignments did occur. Tier 2 in the bottom lane TP. was the first target. TP behind by Carmine Core here. There's the Nico Pop Blossom onto Larson. So at least as well. Last embrace going in. Ooh. And the unstoppable force meets a very movable object. Carmine Core are knocked off the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a big fall, it seems, as they are locked out of the fight. Two kills over to Rogue in exchange for just Zoelise. Larson going in once again. Charm buffered away by Cabo Shard, but that's another tier two for Rogue's coppers. Great ultimate from Finn. I like the idea from Casey. A nice TP flank from Saken, locking up Larson and Zoelise, but. It's just the support that becomes the target. Six deaths to his name, but ultimately he is the person on your team that you want dying. As Larson, deathless. Comp, deathless. Only a single kill onto Markoon as well.
They're gonna secure the Baron. Rogue looking has that unstoppable force. Cabochon spotted by that super minion. Rogue can just step forward. You've got comp, you've got the range. There's the TP behind. Carmine Core gonna pull the trigger, but is their gun loaded with blanks? They've got six shots at it. But there goes the Magnus Storm. Oh. There's the first. Vivian Death on oh. top as well. The stop on Seiko means he can't engage. He couldn't get in with a part blossom, but still the shot down to Cabochon. Larson's still alive on the back line. Comp has fallen. Bo pulled back in, dashes back in, but falls as Marcoon takes the kill. Marcoon continuing to step in. Heartbreaker forward. Can't land the spectral more. Rogue will claim the inhibitor as their prize. Casey ultimately get a kill onto Comp, but it's Rogue that remain the victors. They unlock another inhibitor. They follow up onto only the Rel Urgot. Control Ward going across here. Taken looking for it. Charm out again by Larson. As Rogue give up mid pressure. Super Minion is pushing in the bot wave. They're going to be about 20 seconds away as Bo goes forward. There's the Pop Blossom at his only Finn and Zoe Elise. Saken pops a stopwatch. The route onto Larson. He pops a stopwatch his own. Finn gets a kill on target, but so now Karma Gorge is routed. They look for something, a final fight that perhaps could have won them the game or at least kept them in it, but I don't think this game's going on much longer. Rogue TP to the side lanes, and they are looking to close this out. It is nothing but a slaughter as Rogue decimates KC. They're looking to secure their first win of spring and a much needed one at that. Upset is being chased down. It's going to be a kill handed over to Marcoon. They will cement the ace, and Rogue will win their first game. 0-3 to 1-3, and three, a long road ahead of Rogue, but perhaps the start of brighter horizons. For Carmine Core, another disappointment. We'll see if they can refine the form that they had in week one tomorrow. I mean, the Malphite pick was glorious. <laughs> but we read it. <laughs> like, no offense to us, Betty, but if we see the Malphite angle... <laughs> Carmine Core probably should have seen it as well. I mean, Finn, maybe, maybe they just thought the Ergot could deal with it. Finn, uh, Finn absolutely smashed that game. I think that he just made it impossible for Upset to play. You can vote for your Kia player of the game at LEC, Onyx, Marcoon, Larson, or Com. I'm sad.